Hi, I'm Jeff from Skating Sisters. I finished my ranunculus top. I know it's been a little while since I showed it last time, but I actually wasn't happy with a few things. So I swapped it around. I added some short rows as I talked to you about last time. And I also changed the, um, the cast off that I used. So I'll stand up, I'll show you. So here it is. Look, it's really nice and loose and drapey. And I've got those short rows at the back to just bring it down a little bit. And it's very cozy and warm. I am. Um, I love it. I love the colour. It's uh, our Skane Sisters Romance in Olive U, which is um, it's just my favourite. I totally, totally love it. Anyway, so what I wanted to show you today was how you do those short rows. Because the pattern itself, it's the Ranuncular Sweater by Nick Cafe Midori, um, doesn't have it. And it's just completely straight around at the bottom. And I think... It's quite a lot shorter too, actually, in the pattern. So I've lengthened it and I've added those short rows to bring it down from about this point here, just around from my side seam, about five centimeters at the back. Do, can you see that, that it's a bit longer? Yeah. So how do you do that? Like, how do you work out how many rows you need to do and how far around you come and all of those kinds of things? And I thought that's a really good thing for us to talk about today. And I'll just talk through what I actually did. So as far as the short rows go, how many you do, what you actually need to do, I've written a whole lot of little instructions here, um, is you need to work out what your, your row gauge is. So we're used to working our st stitch gauge, which is the number of stitches that you have in 10 centimeters. But short rows, it's really important with your row gauge, so how many rows you have in 10 centimetres. Now, we're gonna make it easy and say you've got 20 rows in 10 centimetres, right? So if you, I might write it down, Janine, because it's often easier for people to, okay. to imagine. Do you want, you to want come me to come around? Come around, come, around, come, around, come on, you yeah. haven't done that for ages, the come around yeah. thing. Coming around. So we've got 20 rows over 10 centimetres. Okay, 20. Right, I hope you're all writing this down. <laughs> in 10 centimetres. So say we want to bring it down five centimetres, obviously that needs to be then 10 rows of short rows. It's quite, it's quite easy with the maths of that. It's obviously just dividing the number of rows in 10. For five centimetres, you divide it in half. So what that means is when you're coming around with your short rows and you're going like this, all the way down, this one, we're gonna have 10 rows. And that will give us an extra five, five centimeters. So it's really not that tricky to actually work out how many that you need. All right. Now, the next thing is to work out which way you do the short rows. And I don't mean um, which technique you use to do the short rows. That can be a whole nother video. There's lots of different techniques. But it's more about, do you do them, um, or, or do you do the long one first, or the short one first? Now, I've got some diagrams to show that too, but I'll just explain a little bit. What I really like about short rows, or, or positioning short rows, is so that the, the short row finishes along the edge of the ribbing, right? So that it kind of gets um, a bit disguised by the start of the ribbing. In this really, really loose gauge, my short rows are actually not very neat. You can see, can you see them here? They're quite big holes. But because of the fact that they're down near that ribbing edge, it kind of gets lost a little bit. I like the same up on the neckline as well to have the short rows along that ribbing edge and I'll just show you a different jumper and a different way of doing it. Um, this is the Koi Viewer jumper and up here she's actually got the short rows and see they're falling down here so rather than coming along this I-cord edge they're actually placing down in this point. And that's not my favorite way. If I'd realized that and thought about it later, I would have probably swapped it around. But it, it's okay, because it does get hidden by, hidden by the color work. So what that means is, we might have to do some more diagrams, Janine. I'm getting that, then, aren't I? <laughs> I Boy, I, I hope you like diagrams. I hope it isn't too much for you all. 
But if you're imagining you're coming down your jumper like this, right? And going around and around. Okay, so we get to the point where we want our short rows to start. And we're coming, this is the, the top, little sleeves up here. So to do mine, I came around and I stopped at that point, turned and came around, stopped at that point. We have to make it even on both sides. Stopped about, I don't know, it was about eight stitches, I think, before and around. And I kept on going, right? So then when you come back and you knit your ribbing, see how the, all those holes are gonna actually sit along that ribbing edge. So that's the, that's the trick of it. So given before we were talking about adding 10 rows, yeah, you'd have to work out the number of passes and the number of stitches based yes. on those 10 so rows. Yes, so the 10 rows would be five turns on one side and five turns on the other side to give you a 10 row total. All right, all right. love the maths. All right. <laughs> See, knitting is all about maths. It's so fantastic. <laughs> and I know that you can all do it. It's um, follow the diagrams. Follow the diagrams. <laughs> I think that was probably my only diagram. With the, with the neckline, what you'd be doing is the opposite. You'd actually be doing this shorter bit first. So this very short one and coming back and going over the top of it. So you get to the, the short, short row and then you knit beyond it and then come back and knit beyond it and then come back and knit beyond it. Um, and you've got to also think about too, how steep you want your short rows to be. So it's a little bit like stairs. You know, if you've got really steep stairs, you're gonna end up with a, a short row that's quite steep like that as well. But if you've got very shallow stairs, so you say you've got, the steep stairs might be two or three stitches in between where you turn. The shallow stitches might be, um, stairs might be eight or 10 stitches between where you turn. So that's that shallow look. So just imagine, yeah, stairs. I wanted it to be quite shallow up here. So I had eight stitches in between. So just do a little slow turn to your right. Is that my right? I know. I've always got my left in control. I'm roll. so glad we caught that on this video. <laughs> yeah. I tell you my secret. I have a little scar on my finger on my right hand, <laughs> which I got when I was about eight. <laughs> and that's how I know it's my right hand. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, I know. So I've always got my left and right wrong. So I'm pretty thrilled with my cut, with my jumper. I've not worn it before because I was actually working out whether um, I liked the bottom. I changed the the cast off to um, the super stretchy bind off, but um, I'll show you that another day because that's you're probably tired by now. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much. See you soon.